Let's play a game. Imagine that you are in a museum in your hometown and you are watching a painting, a portrait, or a scene. How many of you recall a picture with a laughing face on it? None of you. Now imagine scrolling Instagram or Facebook, how many smiling and laughing people do you see? Much more. Although comparing our Facebook feed to museum content is a strange thought, we have to admit, that for generations of royalties, the filled with family portraits hallways were like Facebook walls showing the faces of their relatives and friends in their best moments. Were they not happy? Or they wanted to be remembered mostly proud and serious? The answer may be very simple. When we take a picture with a camera, we catch a glimpse of the time, but when we paint a portrait, there is a long process of posing, which made the models bored. It is rather difficult to make someone pose with a smile for hours. Besides the fact, that most of the people that could order a portrait back in the days were primarily wealthy men, and they usually prefer to look powerful, there is also a lot of children painted with almost identical seriousness. We can still find some subtle smiles and some tingles in the art of the old masters, but for centuries the smiling face was like a four-leaf dandelion in art. And then, after photography was invented, the smiling portrait became more and more popular, and now we instinctively smile when we see the camera. But what about the laugh? It's very hard to capture the exact moment when someone laughs from their heart, and it's almost impossible to make a laughing selfie. Now imagine how you would paint it without a reference to a photo. Yet there are some amazing paintings that were left to the world. The open laugh was considered inappropriate for centuries and the few left masterpieces in our history, show it was portraying mostly people from lower classes. The ladies from upper classes were allowed to smile mystically, but the full blast of laughter was reserved for theater performers, musicians, or at least drunk people. Painters like Rembrandt, Vermeer, and Brouwer dared to find inspiration in tavern life, but the true master of laughing portrait remains Franz Hals. While during the Renaissance the idea that love and music are deeply connected manifested in art, Van Hunt thirsts the merry fiddler and Leicester's the concert from 1623 express more lust than pure and innocent feelings. One of the most famous laughing portraits is actually showing a smirk, rather than a real laugh. The Laughing Cavalier from 1624 by Franz Hals catches the sly face of a man in love. We can see bees and flowers on his sleeves, and the blush on his face. His mustache was fashionable for this period and together with his hair flow brings such a vitality to the painting. While the Laughing Cavalier is more subtle and playful, the smoker painted in 1626 shows a man with a much more vulgar and destructive expression. The two portraits show an opposite stage of the fall of the man's soul, the fall of love and the fall in a bad habit. It is considered that Franz Hals made around 300 works during his life. He painted burghers, noblemen, and scientists, but his portraits of kids, street artists, or beggars, show how much he was interested in capturing the most humanistic expressions. But what makes Franz Hals' paintings really special is the way he used the brushstrokes to capture the movement and the laughing gesture. The Portrait of Laughing Boy from 1625 is one of his most recognizable paintings. Some sources say that this is one of his own children. Look at his wide smile, we can see all of his front's teeth, his shaggy hair, and peachy cheeks. The light in his crinkled eyes. Every detail needed is there, yet the strokes are flickering. It is like we can catch the movement of his head. In contrast to the painting of the young child that knows so little about life and can be easily amused, we can see a portrait called Mala Bab of Harlem, painted five years after The Laughing Boy. It shows a woman holding a big tin beer mug, leaning in her own laugh with an owl on her shoulder. She was a patient in a mental institution and lots of critics say that her portrait is dark, creepy, and gives the audience chills, but others find it more charming and mysterious. Like there is a secret funny side of the miserable life, that only the deranged mind has the ability to appreciate. This painting is known also as Witch of Harlem and the image of the same woman appears in other pieces like the versions of Han Van Makeren and the later work by Kees Verkade, the bronze Malabab from 1978. There is an old Dutch proverb saying drunk as an owl, which probably explains the bird on her shoulder. After many other artists tried to accomplish the vibes of Hall's paintings, only one of his students manages to catch it on her own self-portrait, and it's see Judith Leister.
Other paintings from the same period, that attracts with their cheerful expression of laugh are, Smiling Girl, a courtesan, holding an obscene image by Gerard Van Hunt Thirst, and Prodigal Son by Rembrandt Harmenshow on Van Rien. Let's not forget the Rembrandt laughing auto portrait, which shows him as his young age. It turns out that in order to draw laughter, you have to experience it more or less. To catch the moment, but not to forget the echo in the end. Watch the next part of the video, which will show the laughing pictures of the coming ages.